We issued the uh, spring forecast months ago, and one of the things we talked about was tornado production. And you and I were looking at the numbers. I think if you ask most people what kind of year it's been for tornadoes, they would suggest it's been above the historical average. They would be wrong. It's actually below, and that's not surprising to you. Yeah, because the fact that, you know, most people relate tornado season in the March, April, May time period, and March and April hasn't been that extensive in the tornado department. We've had severe weather and we've had events, but the El Nino that was upon us here that's weakening quickly has had some influence on that matter and has held back the tornadic activity. And if you look back at historical averages, usually you don't get a lot of tornadoes in El Nino Springs. But since it's weakening, things are going to start to change. You can see the averages here so far this year. Uh, 347 is not that bad, which is good news. Uh, but we've had other kind of events. Hail has been a uh, mm -hmm. one of the main things that has happened. But again, the El Nino has held down higher pressure from developing off the southeast coast that pumps up that really juicy air out of the Caribbean and Western Gulf. We haven't had that yet, but that is starting to come to a change. You know, one of the things you've always told me you look at that is a, a, one of your keys to a long-range forecast, and especially this year, yep. are water temperatures anomalies. I have them here in the Pacific, Paul. Explain to our viewers why that's important and what do you see? Well, Bernie, just a little while ago, you explained one ingredient that you need, the, the, the moist air coming into the Plain States, but you also need some upper-level disturbances to come in pretty strong in the West Coast and then go through the Rockies into the Plains. And I think a lot of times we can dis discover those paths and watch that development based on water temperatures. You have a warm body of water north in the North Central Pacific, but cooler waters in the Northeast, and that's kind of a, a travel zone right in between for these disturbances, which is going to make the pattern active for the end of April into the first half of May. Yeah, and I know that's something you're really concerned about. You could see the anomalies here, how you have that cooler water off the West Coast. Let's really quickly talk, uh, Paul, talk about this graphic late April into mid-May. Yeah, for the uh, first couple of weeks in May, even the end of April here, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot of energy going into the middle of the nation along with warm, moist air coming out of the southwest Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean, you know, all meeting up in the plains right over Tornado Alley. And I think this is going to be an active period for the next three weeks coming up for the middle of the nation. We're going to start to see higher pressure on the East Coast, helping to pump that moisture up. And you can see by the gesture we just talked about coming out of the Northeast Pacific, all meeting up right in the middle of the nation. Just a, a pretty good setup here for tornadic activity and several events mm -hmm. up leading up to Mother's Day. Really quickly, Paul, in about 10 seconds, the late part of uh, May start to trend down a little? A little bit in the Plain States, especially more leveling off of the jet stream. Still could see a little bit more action farther east. We may see some stronger cold fronts get to the mid-Atlantic. That's where you may see more severe weather.